going on everybody it's Patrick from Purple Park Studios and welcome to another tutorial uh, today we're not doing anything with this icosphere so I'm going to delete it today I'm actually going to show you my process for um, working with images as planes in blender from scratch so I'm gonna hit one to go into front mode and the very first thing I do is if you don't have images as planes add-on enabled go to edit preferences and you can search for images and just make sure this little box is checked there then you'll hit shift a go to image images as planes and navigate uh, your in your computer to wherever you have the file saved all right so I have selected this uh, photo here that I pre keyed in Photoshop if you don't know how to key out a video or a photo I will leave a link a couple links to a few different videos in the description now Images as planes will work with a movie file, um, which so that's a great way for bringing uh, video footage that you that shot on a green screen or something and keyed out, bringing it into Blender and building a 3D environment around that footage. Um, and you can also work with photos. Now, typically, I do work with video files, but today I wanted to use a photo because I think that a photo for someone who's just starting out uh, using blender and using this technique in blender a photo is a really easy way to start out because it's not moving there's less things to worry about so if you really plan to get into using uh, images as planes and movie clips green screen footage in blender and, and really selling that effect of a CG environment uh, combined with real footage and this is a great tutorial to start out or if you've already been doing it I'm you might hopefully pick up some other cool points so um, so once you've selected your photo here now you can either choose principal which will just bring in the photo or emit um, and emit will you know emit light from the photo now it's not gonna have a whole lot of light being emitted at first um, but we'll get into this a little bit later for now I'm just gonna choose principled because you can always change this later in the shading editor and I'll, I'll show you what I mean later on so import images as planes and it's pretty small so I'm just gonna hit s and scale it up a bit and then R, X, and 90 to rotate it and you can see it's just a plane and we can't see our footage or our, our picture um, so what we need to do is well up here at the top you could either go to look to you can either go to look dev mode here which will allow you to see it or of course rendered mode you need to add some lights and stuff um, but we're actually gonna stay in this mode here but in order to see our footage we'll hit this little drop down arrow and then just click texture and now we can see our footage and this will allow us to work a little bit quicker for now without um, you know using too much of our comp computer laptop CPU so the first thing I'm going to do is hit G and Z move the footage up and just line the feet up scrolling in with the middle mouse wheel here G and Z line the footage up about like that and then I'm going to hit control A and apply all the transforms so that now if I want to scale it he scales from the x-axis there which is what we want so I'm actually just gonna make this a little bit bigger for right now tap into edit mode here and I can hit control R and I'm just gonna add some loop cuts and get rid of some of the areas I don't need and since this is a picture there's gonna be quite a few areas that I don't need so I'm just gonna make a smaller box around this here now you got to be careful doing this if you're using video footage because it will cut off your video footage um, so just be aware of that and this step isn't even necessary I'm just gonna do it to be a little bit cleaner so I'll hit X and faces alright so as you can see it's just a little flat plane now I've got a nice little cutout to work with and from here I'm gonna start building a, a little 3d environment around this footage so the very first thing I want to do is I'm gonna name this collection IAP for images as plane then I'm gonna right click on my mouse and hit new collection double left click and I'm gonna name this Enviro for environment. So I'm going to hit Shift A and I'm going to add a plane and I'm just going to scale that up a bit. Now, the one thing you want to do almost immediately, just so you don't forget after you bring your images plane in, is just select the, the footage or the picture here and go over here to your material properties tab and you want to turn the roughness all the way up. And that's just so it, the footage isn't going to be shiny or you're not going to get you know any weird glares on the footage or anything like that the second thing you want to do is scroll down under the materials property tab to this blend mode here and change it from alpha blend to alpha hash and the shadow mode from opaque to alpha hashed and this is going to allow well if we go to our look dev mode here 
go to our render properties tab and click ambient occlusion and screen space reflections if I was to make this plane uh, we'll give this plane a material real quick here if I was to make this uh, shiny like that and turn up the metallic you can see my reflection in there which is pretty sweet um, but this won't work well if these are not selected if this is still at say alpha blend so you can see right there the shadow goes away so you want to make sure that it's set to alpha hash and alpha hash while we're in look dev mode here um, I remember I do have ambient occlusion and screen space reflections on let's start uh, creating an environment around this footage so I am gonna use this plane um, however I think we're going to give it a new look so I'm gonna leave it metallic I'm just gonna bring the roughness to something like say 0.34 something like that and then I'm gonna tap into edit mode and hit 2 for edge select mode and I'm just gonna grab these edges and hit E and Z and just bring them up like that and I'm actually gonna get rid of the metallic for now maybe the roughness bring it like so and let's change the color of this room here so bring down that right like so maybe bring the roughness up a bit like that and let's go to our shading tab and I'm just gonna hit this little arrow here and turn the world opacity down like that Alright, so I'm going to hit Shift A and I'm going to add in a bump node. And I'm going to put that down here, plug the normal into the normal. And then I'm going to hit Shift A, I'm going to add a noise texture, plug the color into the height. And we'll turn the scale up a bit like that. And hit Shift A and we're going to add in a color ramp. I'm just going to pull this like this or maybe we'll go this way turn the white down just a little bit like that and I want to zoom in here and I'm going to change the color of this room I'm gonna grab this color here and plug it up into the base color because we're using this color ramp uh, to filter out the noise here from the noise texture but we can also take the color and plug it up into the base color and this is going to allow us when we when we switch these colors here, I'll zoom in here, so I'm going to select the white, click on this white here, I can get the little eyedropper and I'm just going to select a part of the shirt there, and then same thing right here, the black, hit the eyedropper, select another color from the shirt, and then we can filter this until we get something that we like. Something like that starting to look pretty cool. And then we can just maybe turn the strength down a bit here. And we can play with the settings in the noise texture until we get something we like. Maybe turn up the detail or try playing with the roughness here. Something like that's kind of cool. We can always mess with the scale. Kind of like it up really, really high. Something like that looks pretty sweet to me. I'm going to save this project here before I lose all my progress. And now that I'm looking at this, I want to see the way this looks with the roughness uh, turned back a bit. Yeah, that's cool, getting some reflections in there. So while we're right here, let's go back to our layout, um, and we're gonna we're gonna play with this a bit more. Um, I think honestly, I don't. I think I don't even need this bump in here. I can if I get rid of that, and I might not even need this noise texture. In all honesty. So what we're going to do next is I'm going to create a new collection up here and I'm going to call it lights and we're going to add some lights into the scene here. Uh, so I'm going to go to my rendered mode here. I'm going to hit shift A and I'm just going to add in a point light. I'm going to hit G and Z to move the light up and then I'm going to just hit G and Y to move it out. If you hear a baby crying in the background, it's because it is nap time. So I'm sorry for that. So I'm just going to change the power of this light to something like 500 for now. Maybe we'll actually go 4000. So we just need to play with the placement of this light here because I don't like how that shadows. Something like that's actually kind of cool. And we can add a, another uh, collection here and we're going to call this one cam and we're going to put our camera in here. 
and we're gonna look through the camera to finalize the way our shots gonna look so I'm gonna hit shift a camera and I'm just gonna hit N camera to view okay so I'll scroll out here so the first thing I'd like to do with my camera is I'm just gonna change to this view uh, for the moment is I like to select the camera here and I scroll down and under viewport display I change this this pass up part two I'm terrible at saying that word I just like to turn that all the way up to one so it really lets me focus on what I'm doing the next thing I want to do is go up here to my output properties tab and I want to change the resolution to 2160 by 2160 and then I'm going to hit N camera to view turn that off and just scroll out one and then camera to view so now I can move around and look through the camera and the reason that I made this 2160 by 2160 is it's a really high quality um, and it's essentially a, a square so if you're posting to something like uh, you know social media it's just gonna be a lot more high quality I mean you could go 1080 if you have a slower computer um, and since we might switch to cycles we're actually, we'll actually go with 1080 it'll still look pretty good okay so I'm gonna go back to my rendered mode here and I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit here and we can select our camera and I know that um, when I took this picture I think I was using a 16 millimeter camera so we can change the focal length to 16 something like that and then we can zoom in a bit and we're just gonna angle this and position this so that it looks correct uh, I think I'm actually going to rotate my footage a bit so if I grab this and hit R I'm just gonna rotate it trying to get these feet to actually be on the ground um, for the moment we're gonna adjust this and get this looking a lot better but for the moment we can just turn off ambient occlusion and screen space reflections maybe zoom in a little bit hit tab and I'm just gonna with these edges up here selected I'm gonna hit F to fill in give that a roof there it's gonna zoom in a bit more here so I actually want to grab this light here and I'm gonna crank this up to 8,000 and I'm going to ch experiment with this focal length here until I find something that I like. And I'm going to go down here to my color management and switch this from filmic to standard. And then the look to medium high contrast. And I'm just going to turn up the exposure a bit here. And the gamma, bring that, bring that a little down a little bit. So you can see that there's this uh, fuzzy like ring around the outside of uh, the footage here. I want to fix that, so I'm going to select my footage. I'm going to hit Shift A, and I'm going to add in a hue saturation node. Plug it in right there. You can see you can do some pretty cool stuff with this I'm just gonna bring the value way down like that and you can see that kind of fixed the issue um, I think it'll work for what we're doing here especially if you plan on doing any color correction in a different uh, program later on so I'm gonna go out of my camera mode so right now I have 36 millimeter I'm gonna try 44 or maybe even 74 I'm gonna try adding a subdivision surface modifier to the plane and changing it to 2, then I'll do shade smooth. I'm going to hit G and Z and just bring the plane down a little bit. Hit tab for edit mode. Let's just go out of the camera mode here so we can see a little better what we're doing. So then I'm going to just apply this subdivision surface modifier. And then I'm going to grab these four squares here. Hit S, Z, and 0 just to flatten them out and then G and Z and I'm going to move them down a little bit like that and zoom in here and I'm just going to grab this plane here G and Z and move that down a bit like that just going to add a loop cut right here and I just 
just want to select this plane here and hit G and Z and just move that up just to make it a bit more interesting I'm also going to crank up the strength here to um, 7.4 on the on the world on the world strength here which I don't even have an HDRI in but uh, just cranking that up just will help um, with the little with the lighting a bit here then we can go to our render properties tab and under color management we can check use curves and you can start experimenting uh, with some curves but first I'm going to save my project so you can see just by playing with these curves here you can get a lot of really cool different looks so I really like that one there it kind of matches in with the shirt that's pretty sweet too Now which one do I like better? That looks pretty sweet to me. Let's try a couple more things here with these curves. I think I'm just going to leave it here. I'm going to probably do a little bit more work with this in Lightroom. Um, but you can see that this is a pretty cool looking photo just from using an images planes. Um, you could do this in Photoshop. I just think that you have a lot more uh, easy creativity in Blender, especially um, since if we were to go, you know, scroll out here, say we wanted to add in some more interesting objects into the scene, let's just make a new folder here, new collection, we'll call it um, extras, shift A, I can just add in a cube, one for front mode, bring it up, control A, all transforms, scale Z, scale it up like this. Um, if we want to add a little bit of depth of field, let's look through the camera here, just go into rendered mode here, and we're going to give this cube uh, the same material as the room. G, oop. Hit G and Z just to move it down a bit, and then R, Z, rotate it. Shift D, duplicate it. Put it right here, maybe. Maybe I'll maybe now I'll rotate this one a different way, like, like that. Looks kind of cool. And then maybe we'll grab Shift D, move this one up here, have it coming out of here, rotate, and we're gonna move this one a little bit closer to the camera. Um, we can just hit G and Y, moving it closer to the camera, or farther away from the camera. You can experiment with it. Maybe you have this one like kind of poking out. Just kind of poking out of the wall a little bit like that. Maybe we'll move it over a bit. Let me rotate this one. You know, control Z all that. Let's just leave it where it was originally, right there. Hit Shift D, maybe we'll add one more. Just gotta watch out for the shadows. G, Y, try moving it back like that. Or maybe up in front. Kinda like it in the back like that. Just want to rotate it so they're not all rotating the same way. Oop. For this, let's right click, set origin to geometry, RZ, so it spins in the right place there. Just want to change the location of this. I don't really want to. Well, we do have to change the camera a little bit, and I'll tell you why. Um, if we scroll down here under viewport display and hit this little drop down arrow under composition guides, we can hit thirds. And you can also do the center as well, but I think thirds will be good. And you can see right now that this picture, it's close, um, but I like to really get my stuff, like I'm really anal about centering things up. So if I move the camera, center it like this, I already think that that's looking a lot better as well, because now I'm directly in the center of the frame. So I want to take this up a notch here. Um, let's rename this folder to cubes. And then I'm going to make a new folder. I'm going to make a new collection here and I'm going to call this spheres. All right, so we can go out of the camera mode. Well, real quick, just so we don't lose this shot, let's uh, select our camera and then hit I 
and we'll add location, rotation, and scale, just so in case we accidentally move it, we have a keyframe here. And you can create different key uh, <laughs> keyframes. You can create different keyframes throughout your timeline um, of different angles and shots that you like. Just make sure you actually keyframe it, so you can always go back and render out that frame. So I'm going to go into my modeling mode here, and in the spheres folder, what we're going to do is I'm going to hit Shift A, and first we're going to add a cylinder. Hit G Z, move it up. Right click to shade smooth. Just fix the normals here. Auto smooth. I'm going to go into top mode, and I'm going to hide the environment. And I'm going to hit G and just move this right underneath this cube. Scale it way down like that. One for front mode. G, Z, and then tap into edit mode. Three, select that. G and Z, pull that up like this. And honestly, I want this whole thing to be like way smaller. I think. Something like that. Yeah. And then I'm going to hit Shift A and add in a sphere. Right click to shade smooth, G, Z to bring it up, 7 for top mode, just center it up right above this here. We can go into x-ray mode here so we can really see what we're doing, make sure we get that pretty centered, it doesn't have to be perfect, whatever. 1 to go into front mode, G, Z, bring that up, scale this like this, and then I'm just going to hit shift D and duplicate this a couple times, make some smaller ones. And if you really, really, really want to go crazy, you could create a curve, link these things to the curve, and have them spinning around. But I don't really want to do all that right now. And then we can just maybe change the scale and the height of some of these. Something like that. And this one in the back we're not really going to see, so maybe we'll just bring it up so that we can actually see it. We might as well look through our camera real quick here do something like that let's see how this is looking uh, we'll need it to put our environment back on and these we can make them the same color as everything else too we can add this material one onto them and I'm gonna real quick save this man that crash earlier is just was scaring me and my laptop is moving real slow right now so now for these you could um, you could give them an emission but I overuse a mission in all of my work, so I'm just gonna try something different today and not abuse the mission. So let's see, that's kind of cool, looking pretty cool like that. The only thing is, maybe we'll just move this little guy in a little bit closer. You could also create a particle system um, and do some really cool stuff with that. I just don't know if I feel like doing all that today. Now the next, and now the thing that I really like about this photo is it's like kind of three colors. It's this like light blue, this like faded orange brownish, and then there's white. And of course black, well there's white and black and everything, but, and, and I just really like it because I feel like the less colors you have, uh, the better. And I'm going to really bring out these colors a little bit more. I might do that in like Lightroom or something, but I think that this is looking pretty cool. This picture is like really close to me. There's just something else that I feel like it should have. I would say fog, but I don't know. And in case you guys are wondering like how I do my projects, like this is literally how I do my projects. Like I just start making stuff, adding stuff, taking it away, and just kind of seeing what looks cool, spending a lot of time. Spending a lot of time going like this, <laughs> as a lot of you guys probably do. I think, hmm. For today, we might just leave this here. I know I've said that a couple times. Um, oh, one other thing we can do real quick, uh, just so we, I like, the less I have to do in like Lightroom, the better. So, under our render property tab, um, we can try changing this from medium high contrast to high contrast. And then there's also very high contrast, which that's just like a little too far, I think, for me. So we'll just go with the high contrast there. I like that because I, you know, you don't want to overdo it here too. You want to have some room to work in other programs if you decide to go that route. So we'll make sure everything's turned back on and uh, we can check bloom. But I don't think we need the bloom here. But yeah, guys, I hope this tutorial was helpful. And if you found it helpful, um, well, that's awesome. So I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Thanks.